Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Right. A lot of people put verse 1 as, you know, the seed, the word of God, cast it out and it'll come back after many days. That's a good application of spiritualizing the scripture. But you got to remember who, who wrote the scripture, who wrote this, Solomon. They weren't told to go out and take the scripture. All Israel knew what to do. Now, you can spiritualize it, but a form of doctrine, what he's saying is what the law says. It's what Jesus said. It's what Paul says to the church. Take bread, give it to the waters. The waters are a type of people, Revelation 17, 15. Give it to seven to eight. Help other people out because you don't know what the evil, you don't know what famine, hunger, you don't know what's going to happen. And that's, you know, 11 chapters of this book. You don't know what's going to happen under the sun. It's to, it's to supply, to give out. And he's saying to a point is, you know, if you help others, God's going to help you. But you helping others are going to help them in times of trouble. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. The water cycle. And there are people who believe, you know, all the people in the Old Testament, you know, the people way back then, they were dumb and didn't know nothing. Well, Solomon knew more than most of the people of scholarship knows today of, of education. Listen, Adam knew that God took a rib out of him and cut him open because he said, this is bone of my bones. God put a deep sleep on Adam, opened him up, took the rib, sealed it back up, and Adam says, hey, this, God took a bone of mine. And when the woman came to Adam, he called her woman, he says, a, a man with a womb. Back to the first man ever to be the first man he knew about biology. Solomon, in his writings of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon, we learn about the evaporation table. Rain comes down, it goes to the sea, evaporates back up, and disciples itself. And he's telling us that when the clouds are full, the clouds empty, rain. If the tree fall towards the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. That's death. Life under the sun. Boom. Death. Now you can take that north as heaven. Or you can, you can take the south as hell. You can apply that application. And there it is. But, again, they didn't go to heaven when they died in Solomon's time. They went to Abraham's bosom. So you can't apply it to that application either. It pictures death. And in life on the earth, he's not seeing a resurrection. Tree falls down, it dies. That's it. Under the sun. That's when I told you. 11 chapters, that's the theme. Ecclesiastes is not a book to run into doctrinal issues. If you do, you'll probably run into troubles. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. What he's saying is, a man... If he sees, you know, it's cold, the wind's blowing, 
I'm not going to farm. I'm going to wait for good weather. Well, those clouds, it could possibly rain today, so I'm not going to go out in the car. What he's doing is he's using excuses. And excuses don't produce anything. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, we don't know, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of that is with child, we don't, or he didn't. I'm not even so far to say even if they know today. I mean, a lot of things they say, we don't know. We don't have an idea. But maybe they don't know. I mean, I don't think today God is going to give ungodly men who reject God and give their advances to other men and give it to evolution and deny the Bible. I don't think God's going to give them really true. Unless it's for a, ble for a blessing for his own people. But Psalms, hey, I don't know how the, how the bones in the womb grow. Even so thou knowest not the work of God who makes it in all. That's agnostic. Agnostic. You cannot put your hand down and say, this is why God's doing this in your life. Job's three friends tried that. Well, Job, you know, you're wicked and righteous. No, he wasn't. Je uh, Job 1 and 2, God said, hey, that man's right. Excuse evil. Well, Job, you know, you didn't help others. You didn't take care of others. No, that's incorrect, too. The fact is, in the realm of what we do know through the whole Bible, there is God, the devil, and man. And if, if, if a man gets sick, Psalm is saying, well, we don't know truly it's God. We don't know truly if it's man. And we don't know truly if it's the devil. You can't always say it's God's fault. You know, insurance policy, act of God. And yet the whirlwind in Job 1 that killed Job's children and destroyed the house was of the devil. That particular passage where, where David numbers Israel and one says God caused the famine. And then it says the devil caused the famine. There's God and the devil working together. And I would assume as far as... me. He gets involved with a sin, uh, alcohol or tobacco, and w with alcohol, he goes to the doctor, and the doctor says, you got cirrhosis of the liver. I'm pretty sure you can nail that on the man of his sins. But somebody who, go who leaves their house and gets in a car accident, well, you know, God's angry with you. No. Oh, the devil's trying to stop you. No. It may be the man that, you know, that ran the red light. And so we can't say we know the ways. I can't sit here today and tell you next year, December, oh, I'm going to be doing this ministry. I'm going to be doing that. I, can't, I don't know. I may die today or tonight. I may die tomorrow. We're going to the farmer's market tomorrow. I can't tell you what's going to I have planned. Okay, they're going to pass out gospel tracts, and I'm going to try to preach the gospel. But we've had times we've gone there, and, you know, we've been stopped by the police. We've had people come up in, you know, stupid questions, or we had people come up, truthfully, honestly, you know, talk to us. We may not get any gospel tracts out. May not be anybody there. So if I were to say tomorrow, this is what, no. And that's why James says, we're to say, Lord willing, because our life is a vapor. We don't know. That's what he's saying in verse five. Don't know. That's agnostic. And there are points in a Christian life, though you know God, though you are saved, yet there is agnostic. I really don't know. There are things in the Bible I don't know. The, I don't know the whole Bible, and there are places. Listen, we've been from Genesis to Ecclesiastes chapter eleven, and there have been times I say I don't know. I'm not afraid to admit I don't know. In the morning, sowed I seed. 
Look at verse 4. He said, he that serveth the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. In the morning sow thy seed. Put it out. And even withhold not thy hand. For thou knowest not whether thou shalt prosper, either this or that. Or whether they both shall be alike good. Now you would think that goes with verse 4, but it really goes with verse 5. Verse 5, Solomon says, we don't know. They say man has wheat. He goes out and plants that wheat. He doesn't know if locusts are going to come enjoy that enjoy that wheat. He doesn't know that maybe there'll be too much rain and drown the wheat. He don't know if there'll be not enough rain and dry out the wheat. Or it may be a great crop. It may be a bumper crop. It may be a little crop. That farmer doesn't know. But do it. Get it out. And then there are, again, there are people who put that application to Mark chapter 4, the sower and the seed, and you can spiritualize it there. That spiritual, listen, you can doctrinally spiritualize and historic. Historic is going of churches today. I don't see anything wrong with that verse is to take it as a sower and a seed. And verse one and two, you can you can apply the spiritual application, the sowing the seed, put it out. Truly, the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing, for it is for the eyes to behold the sun. So you know, when you've been out in the sun, you get vitamin D. Vitamin D is very essential. And when you got today kids that stay in indoors all day and play video games and they don't go out in the, in the sun and all that, they're missing their vitamin D. So I said, get out there in the sun. Don't get too much sun. But then don't get too little sun. So there's a health life. But if a man live many years, this goes right along with verse 7. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many, and all that come is his vanity. The sun, and you know, get your vitamin D of the sun, but you know, if, if, if you got many years and, and happiness and joy, We've seen the book of Eagle We've seen life. There's going to be troubles. There's going to be problems. There's a negativity to life. There's also a positive. But there's more negativity. Rejoice, O young men, in thy youth. While you're young, rejoice, be happy. Let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Walk in the ways of thy heart. You see where they got it from? Let your heart follow you. What I've been telling you about is Ecclesiastes, a doctrinal book to go, hey, there we go. Jeremiah says the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. Who can know it? Jesus tells us how the heart is, is adultery, murders, theft, sins, lying. There it is. Under the sun, of no doctrinal reference. And in the sight of thy eyes. That's exactly what Solomon's been doing through the whole book. I'm going out, I'm going to do it all, I'm going to get it all, I'm going to see it all. I'm going to. And when we get to that verse, we're in chapter 11, and we're not going to jump to Lord willing tomorrow night. We can't forget chapter 12. And we're going to close, Lord willing, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 tomorrow. And when we close with the chapter, Lord willing, then we're going to get a doctrinal statement.
But what he says about follow your heart, and listen, everybody today, follow your heart. Let your heart guide you. Not according to Jeremiah. Not according to Jesus. Not according to Paul. That heart is wicked. That the Bible says salvation of the heart man believes on the Lord. Believe with thy heart the Lord Jesus Christ. But know thou, for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Oh, okay. So you don't have a license to do whatever your heart wants to do. Because whatever you do from your heart, God is going to judge. So you got to properly judge yourself and your heart to... And Proverbs chapter 1, he said, you know, he got these people come on, come on, let's go kill this guy and we'll get their stuff. Well, if you let your heart do, oh yeah, I'm going to go follow. God's going to judge you as a murderer. God's going to judge you as a thief. The murderer part in the Old Testament, you die and go to hell. It's not wise. And when Solomon lays out the, 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 the follow your heart, he also lays out at the end of the verse, God will judge you for what you do with your heart. You know? That's like the very first time somebody gets a cigarette. Ha <laughs> ha! And then you get massively sick afterwards that day. Oh. The joy to sin, the, the, the pleasures of sin in Hebrews 11. Yay, all right, for a season. Oh. See, that's part of the Bible people don't, yay, oh. You know, you can do whatever you want as a Christian. You know, you can. We have a free will. But what's going to happen to the judgment seat of Christ? Can a Christian murder somebody? Yeah, absolutely. What's going to happen to the judgment seat? Now, you won't lose your soul, but what's going to happen to the judgment seat of Christ? Of all the sins out there in the world, there is no sin that a, that a Christian will commit that will lose his soul, but the works will be tried by fire. And you can do whatever you want as a Christian, but when you walk through New Jerusalem and you have no more crowns and you had no inheritance in the millennium and you didn't get to hear well done, was it worth it? Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart. And put away evil from thy flesh. Okay. Do the ways of your heart, but don't sin. And evil here is a sin. And it's also the consequences of sin. See the flesh? That's what John says many, 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 many years later. The lust of the flesh. There it is in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. And the lust of the flesh will get you no rewards and no pleasure with God. For childhood and youth are vanity. And you live your long, young life and you have no accountability to God. Then there comes that day when you realize you sin against a holy and righteous God. Now you. See, you think that Psalm is giving you a free license. And people say, well, you Christians, you know, you can do where. Yeah, we can do where. You're absolutely correct. I believe that. But also the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 12 that my father in heaven will chastise me. That's not pleasurable. It says in the Bible, if I get to the judgment seat of Christ, I may lose rewards and crowns. and That's not pleasing. The Bible also says that as a you can lose your life early. 
So if somebody goes running to Ecclesiastes, oh, I can do whatever I want. They, they forgot to tell you about judgment. And they forgot to tell you that he says, put away the evil of thy flesh. Follow your heart, but don't sin. Do proper. That's what he's telling you. 